And now before the Islam fans, the Habib fans all comment in my comment section, I want to say that I've said on multiple times that Islam Akhachev has the potential, in my opinion, to be one of the greatest of all time. I think he's one of the most well-rounded fighters right now in the UFC with his striking and his wrestling. I mean, although I have been critical of the Volkanovski fight, it is pretty impressive that Islam Akhachev was still able to get a razor close decision win in Volkanovski's game, right? He wasn't really able to get so many takedowns. Most of it was on the feet and he still was able to get a decision. That's pretty commendable. So while you guys see the title of the video, you guys see the thumbnail, please stay with me here. But here's the truth. Islam Makhachev is potentially ruining his legacy and we're going to talk about this. What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. If you guys aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, share. But I know you guys don't want to hear this. I know you guys hear this every video, but please help support. Q&A is tomorrow. If you guys have any questions, tomorrow is going to be the last opportunity, the last time. So comment today because tomorrow at 10 a.m. it is going to be coming out. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about the Charles Oliveira fight news and Mackenzie Dern and Angela Hill. I'm going to be talking about all of that quick fire. So let's just get into it now. All right. Islam Agachev potentially ruining his legacy. What am I talking about? This is something that I caught onto a week ago, but people are finally talking about this. I saw when Islam originally said this and was thrown off and pretty disappointed. Now, before I get into that, I want to talk about Habib. Now, Habib, obviously, Islam's friend, mentor, whatever you want to call him. A lot of people consider him the GOAT, in my opinion. I don't think he is in the GOAT conversation just because his career was so short. I mean, and when you look at the level of competition that he has faced, I mean, he faced Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, Dustin Gaethje. I mean, the list goes on. He dominated those guys. And in my opinion, I think if he would have stuck around, you could have been in that GOAT conversation because the guy was just so dominant with his wrestling. But as of right now, I don't think he's the GOAT. You know, I think you got to put a lot of respect on his name because the guy is a really good fighter. You've seen his talent. But it's just one of those things where I would have rather him proved himself a little bit more. Now, how is Islam Makhachev destroying his legacy potentially? Well, he said something recently that set my alarm off. And a lot of people were noticing this way after the fact, but I noticed it right when he said it, that his mom potentially wants him to retire. We cannot do this again. We had it with Habib. You know, Islam Akhachev, like I said, he is so well-rounded. I think he has the potential to beat guys like Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, and we got guys like Armin Sarukian that we want to see a rematch with, Rafael Fazia. The list goes on and on, and this is a huge disappointment if this does happen because the guy defended his title once. Like, let's be real, this guy is nowhere near GOAT status. Like, he needs to do a lot more work. I really want Islam to get out of Habib's shadow. You know, I feel like there's a constant cloud around him. A lot of people are just comparing him to Habib. And after the last Volkanovski fight, it's hard to remember how good he really is, but he is. And it's time to put some respect on his name. I hope that this doesn't happen. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I understand it. Look, it's commendable and I respect it. And I respect the discipline that Habib had to be like, hey, I'm going to stop this for my mom, for my family. But it'll just be very disappointing for us as fans. All right. Lots of fights were announced today, as well as releases, one of which being William Knight. William Knight, we talked about this before. Terrible performance last Saturday. And I mean, terrible. Like, it was just embarrassing. Landed like eight strikes or something like that. And I hate to say this because I don't mean to be like a dick to fighters. I understand this job is super hard and pressure is always there plus injury and we don't really know if he was injured. But it's kind of deserved after that last performance, you know, not even trying. And unless he had an injury of some sort, there really is no excuse. It seemed like the will to win was just not there that night. And I think most people are fine with this decision from the UFC. But a few fights were also announced. Oliveira versus Darius. This is the fight that we've been talking about for months. Clearest fight to make, the easiest fight to to make number one contender fight and i think the pressure is on for these two because islam's probably not coming back to october so pressure is really on if islam is really going to fight one more time this year who's to say that volkanovsky can't just slide in so whoever wins this fight is going to have to win i think by either dominance or finish i think it has to be probably by a finish because i think a lot of people are going to want to see a volkanovsky fight especially if charles Oliveira wins the pressure is really on charles because if charles wins or has to be by emphatic fashion like it has to be very impressive like first round knockout first round sub to remind everybody who he is but neil darius is a tough tough opponent because he is well rounded he has a great ground game great wrestling and we've seen him have power in his strikes this is a really bad matchup for Charles Oliveira and honestly I wouldn't be surprised if I wind up picking Benil Dariush and I'm a huge Charles Oliveira fan and I would love to see a fight between Dariush and Islam that fight was supposed to happen last year obviously Benil pulled out but like I said in my opinion this is the tough tough matchup definitely the one of the toughest matchups that Charles Oliveira could have currently in the top five and I think if Oliveira wins I think Volkanovski might just slide back in and rematch Islam Akachev I could see a scenario where similar to the Islam fight Benil drops Charles with one of those big overhand left and submits him or maybe get some ground and pound going because he won't be afraid to go to the ground. I don't know. It's a worrying fight as a Charles Oliveira fan, but I also like Benil, so we'll see how the fight goes. I've seen his wrestling very dominant. I think I might favor Benil going into it right now, just as of right now. I know Charles Oliveira has looked really good before, but man, I just don't know. And the final thing I want to talk about is Mackenzie Dern, you know, obviously coming off a loss to Jan all the way back in October-ish, and we've seen her have complications with strikers before. She's going to be facing off against Angela Hill May 13th. I don't know if this is the main 
event. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh no, Anthony Smith versus Johnny Walker is going to be the main event. So this is going to be a co main event. I don't mind the card so far, how it's shaping out. And early on, I think I have Mackenzie Dern. I mean, I could see a scenario where Angela kind of moves forward, but I think we've seen Mackenzie Dern improve in her striking. Angela Hill has worked on her wrestling, but I think this is a rather good matchup for Mackenzie Dern. I'm going to do a little more digging into it. I'm not as sure as I was about the Benil Dariush and Charles Oliveira fight, but this is going to be an interesting fight. Interesting fight at straw weight. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Leave all your thoughts on everything I just talked about. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Q&A and I'll see you guys in the next one.